It is a great honor and a privilege to introduce Betty Apple. Your maiden name was Lefkovich. We came your beautiful apartment in Yerushalayim in Jerusalem. And Betty, you must be really the youngest 86 year old person I've ever met. Don't say my age. It's incredible. <laughs> no, no, because it's amazing. Okay, it's, okay, it's, it's a okay. big blessing. Okay, okay. So, uh, when were you born? Do you know the date? Yes, yeah, sure. I was born the 19th April 1935. Wow. And where were you born? In Valenciennes. In Valenciennes, in the north of France. Now, this is a story really of all the Jews which are all over the world because my I was supposed to be Portuguese. My father came from was born in Poland in Lodge and he was the youngest of a very poor and very very, very big family. He had a sister who went to the States, a brother who went to South to, to, to South America and it was he didn't want to go to the Polish army. So when he was eighteen something I think he decided to leave Poland and he he had no money and he uh, he had a trunk with him that trunk which is there okay and he went he had a friend in Lisbon who had work and the friend found him a job so he went through Russia and he learned Russia he went to Paul to Germany right? and he arrived in the north of France in Valenciennes no money anymore the train stopped and he said okay I will stay there, I will work there a little bit and then let's continue. And he started um, working, I don't know what exactly, um, working with uh, uh, um, uh, pins of rabbits, you know, thing like and he be because he became a, f a fur after that. And then, so he was alone and someone introduced me, introduced him to my mother who had come also from Lod, but she was she was in Lille. She had a brother in Lille, so my mother was in Lille, and somebody introduced them. And this I was born in, in Valenciennes. This is the story of the no. Now in forty, so there was my, me and my brother Jacques. I've got a brother who is two years younger. In forty, when the German invaded France, everybody went, was on the road. All the not Jews, everybody was on the road, and we left. For, uh, we were on the road, we, and my mother was pregnant, very pregnant. In, it was July 40, okay, and my mother was pregnant, and uh, I remember I had a doll, a big doll, and my father had a, 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 a car, just a truck, there was only place in front. So I came with a doll, and my father said, no, 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 there's, if there's no place of a doll, you leave a doll. So I left the doll. And uh, so there was my father driving, my mother pregnant, my, me and my brother, we have a brother who is student tech. So we were on the road, everybody was on the road. I don't know if you have the French, everybody was afraid of a German. There was a famous, famous film about this, which is called Jeux d'Interdit, from the games. It's a very famous film about people on the road and the bomb and the plane the bomb. It reminds me about what happened in Ukraine because somebody interviewed me a few months ago about Ukraine, about, about the people on the road. So we arrived in Normandy and I don't remember but my mother went to the hospital in Donfront and gave birth to the little boy. Who was a little boy? And we came back, I can't remember. I remember how we left but I can't remember after what happened after we, after we came back and there was nothing left in the house, no doll. Today I collect dolls. No dogs, nothing, was nothing. My father went and bought both, but everything, everything had disappeared from the house. It happened to us. No furniture, nothing. So when we, 40, we started uh, living until 42. And Can I just ask, Betty, on your mother's side, um, where did her parents come from? Also Poland. Everybody. And was. I think you have a picture of um, the grandparents. This is this is the this is my parents. This is the, the parents of my mother. And where were they living? Did they also come to to France? No, 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 no. Everybody was uh, deported. Everybody disappeared. But were they living all the time in in Poland? Everybody in Poland. lived in Poland. Poland. They they just went in smoke. Everybody went in smoke. 
Now I can talk. A few, four years ago, I couldn't talk. And I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why I can talk after that. Um, so smoking, they were, unfortunately, they were, they were guests. Uh, yes. So, so, we... And you have also... Uh, this is a picture of the, the mother of my father, but she died before the war. Luckily, she died normally. My father, his, my father's father died when he was 14 and his mother died when he was in France. So luckily they died before, not from the Holocaust. Okay, luckily. So, so he, he didn't, my father didn't do his future in Poland. He didn't want to go to the army. So he decided to leave, which a lot of people. And uh, so this, so 42, and we had nothing to eat, 42. There was nothing, we had tickets for bread. Then in '42, the German had decided that law that the, Ger the, the Jews could not work, and the, it's from the age of six, the children had to wear the 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 yellow yes. star. So when I was six, I, I wore I, I went to the yellow star. My father put me in a school in a Catholic school, and I had a uniform dark blue, and I had this huge star, Juif, with. And uh, in the in the in the in the morning, my father used to take me to school, and there was a lovely. I love uh, Catholic nurse, uh, nuns. They were always all my life. They had been very very nice to me. Really, I love the nuns. It was beautiful, smiling, and she, and and the German had decided that 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 thing should be sewn. But my father had a woman working with him because he had a little fur shop. She decided no, she's going to put tic tac him on the thing. So, so when we arrived to the school, this nun was taking the star, they put it in a pocket, and the other little girl wouldn't see that I was Jewish. But okay. the nuns knew you were Jewish. Yes, yes, of course. So, and at the time there was a, there was a prayer saying that the Jews had killed Jesus. We used to pray in the morning. And the, the Jews had killed Jews, and it was really very. I was six. I was six. And after that, the Pope, you know, the Polish Pope, who came after, changed that prayer. That Pope, somebody from the came to interview me about him. That Pope, he was. He had. He was very. He had French Jews. He was very, very nice man. So this was forty-two. Uh, September forty-two, the, the holidays. And this woman who worked for my father said the Germans were in France, there were all kind of laws, there was nothing to eat. And, uh, uh, and um, she said it would be better that the children would not be at home. So when, so when the, the, it was the 11th of September, 42, now I know, before I didn't know, uh, the same 42, we were not at home. My brother and I were not at home. So it was my parents and the little boy who was two and, a half, two and something. And the bedroom was, they had a shop and the bedroom was in front. So the German arrived, and a German and a French man arrived. And they knocked at the door very early in the morning where there was a grill there. And uh, this, my father told me about it. And the neighbor opened the window and the French said to her, is there somebody at home? She said, no. She said, was there somebody yesterday? She said yes. If she would have said they left three months ago and they were not there, they wouldn't have knocked the door. But because she said yes, they knocked the door. So upstairs, my father was, and then you, this you can see in the, in the video, in the uh, reportage when I, 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 I speak. My father was saying to my mother, take the baby and come, because we had a house with a door going in another the garage to another street. So my father said to my mother, take the baby and come with me. She said, no, 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 they won't. You go to see the, you go to, you go the, to the children. We, 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 he had put us somewhere in the country, I can't remember where. We, we were not at home, otherwise I wouldn't be here. So, so he had, so he had, uh, uh, so, so he, he asked her again, she said, no, 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 you. And this man said to me recently, you know, your mother saved you by telling to your father, go to the children, she saved you. Because he forced her, he forced him to go to, 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 to. So he went with a, holding a shirt with a 
my uh, he left with a garage by 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 by, by walking. And he ran to the street where his woman who was working for him was here. He said, "Hide, hide me, hide me." The German there, and he said to her, "He said, I know someone. I will make false paper, okay?" But he said to her, "Go to the station and see if my wife is there, and tell them that the little boy." Was there is not their son. He hasn't been circumcised. He's not Jewish. It's a little boy he had adopted. Because it was a normal, he came back and there was no circumcision. So my father, after the war, will circumcise him. So 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 she said. said te, she said. My father said to to her, tell the German or the French or who that the little boy is a, is a little boy they have adopted and it's not their it's not their son. So she tried. She went to the station. Was near. And she saw some anomaly, and she said, "This is but." And the French, but they went to the German, and it was too, too, too late. The German had already a list; he was written on the list. So she went back, and she did some papers, false papers, under the name Leroy. Until I left Covid, and the day after, the day after, my father arrived. It was mid, uh, mid, mid of September, something like this maybe 15th of September, arrived to us, took us in a corner and said to them, we shot at us, he said to them, your name is not, you are not Jewish, your name is not Lefkowitz, your name is Leroy now. And I said, well, I said, well my name is Lefkowitz, what do you call him? He said, no, 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 your name is Leroy. You, if somebody asks you, forget you are not Lefkowitz anymore. Your name is Leroy. So, and he took us, it was raining, it was cold in the evening, in Valenciennes, there is a big, big river called Lesco, this part, with a peniche. Peniche, you know, this is this barge who carry coal. In the north of France, there are a lot of coal who carry coal. There's a documentary made about me now, 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 which is, uh, which I'll show you after that. And, um, um, and, and uh, he, so there was my father and my my uh, my brother and me and he had a sister there who had no children who used to like her very much and her husband had already gone to Lyon so she came with us so we went to that peniche in the water it was a little a little window and she get, got in with my holding my brother who was five I was seven okay and my father said get in I said I started crying, I said, I'm afraid, I don't want to go, it's, it's, it's smelling, I don't want to go there. So my father said, look at the bridge, there is a soldier with a gun, if you don't go in, we're all going to be shoot, we're all going to be killed because of you. And he pushed me there. And until now, when I go up in the evening, I always am afraid of the dark. If there is no, no electricity, I see, I see very quickly that there, there will be a light in the stair, even Shabbat, and Shabbat I have a problem with it, I don't want to put the light, I need, I, otherwise I'm afraid of the dark, well, well I'm afraid of the dark. So we, we spent there in that coal, in the coal, two days, three days, I don't remember where, crossing because of, I'll show you the French, France was, was, was divided into two, there was a free zone and the occupied zone, so we live in the North France which was the occupied zone and we cross all France which is a free zone and we arrive in Lyon and we took a train there in Lyon there's a documentary now made about me and my story I'll show you and uh, you can have a copy maybe and uh, the um, we and there was nothing to eat there was nothing to eat there was a packet of a bottle I remember a bottle of water and a packet of biscuit nothing we used to finish we used to stop at night and we used to get out and got roots and eat leaves, there was nothing to eat. Two, three days. And I began to be full of furuncles, you know, full of, of uh, spots, there was, uh, under, there was nothing to eat. And we arrived at a station in Lyon, and we took a train, and the Gestapo come in, and they said, Papyrin, it's a classic film of a, classic picture of, of the film, Papyrin. And my father gave us a look, uh, he was there, I was there, he gave us a look, and he said, um, he, he don't say, and he gave us, he gave them the paper, which was Le Roi, and they had a look at the paper, and they gave him back the paper. So second time, there was a few times like this that I really 
And you remember this incident? This I remember. This I, this I remember very good. This I remember very well. And we arrived in Lyon. And in Lyon, there was a husband of my aunt who was there. He had already, already arrived in the flat. And we stayed there a few days. And my, remember my aunt took me to a doctor. There was no antibiotic. We started burning all this thing with, with alcohol. And I kept always asking my father, where's my mom, where's my mom, where's mother, where's my mother, where's mother, where's mother? I said, we'll see her, we'll see her. And one day in the street, he took my, the hand of my brother and me, and I said, where's, where's mother? You promised that you were going to see her. So, he, so the first time I never saw my so tears in his eyes, and my father said, don't worry, the German took her, but after the war she will come back. It's the only time that he talked about it. He never talked about it. And he never talked about it. Sure, this is a picture of your mother and your brother. Yes, my mother and my brother. Here you have it here. Oh, this is... This is taken by a cow. It's the only picture I have. If you can hold... Um, and this is a book made by Carl Schenter, okay? This is a book made by Carl Schenter with all the name of the children. This is the only picture of my, share of my brother I have. And of, uh, wow, it's the only picture of your brother. Yeah. So this is, it's an amazing... So he was born, he was born on the 31st of July, 1940. What was his name? Maurice Michel. Maurice Michel. He was born on the 31st of July, 1940. And I'll tell you something extraordinary. Um, I believe in certain coincidences when uh, when i was pregnant of my daughter of my at the time it was no ultrasound we had a son but my daughter when i was pregnant we didn't know if it was a boy and a girl we said if it would be a boy we'll call michael if it's a girl we'll call michael and she was born the 31st of july 1970 so exactly 40 years after she was born uh, and she's she had 30, 30 years yes 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 you know when I met my husband it was just I met him in 64 which was just 20 years after the Shoah and I didn't know anything I didn't know anything my mother disappeared for many many years I knew nothing and it's and I had I didn't want to talk about it my husband was haunted, fascinated by the Shoah. He read, he wrote, he read articles about me. He really was fascinated. He was a fantastic writer. Um, I, did, I talked about, so when we were after Lyon, we, we took uh, a train one day, and we, uh, uh, one day a man came, his name was Nicola. And my father said, you go with him. So we stopped asking questions. So this we went to, with Nicola and my aunt, not my father. And we took a train from Lyon to Chambéry, Chambéry, Les Pins, Le Lac. And then we, in the mountain, we started walking, walking, walking. In the evening, two little girls, two little children exhausted. And we arrived to the path and there was a barn and there was a house. And two people, a couple, smiling. So you stay with us now. You stay with us. And uh, they looked at me. And I looked terrible, I was thin, I was full of spot, I was in a terrible state. They, they said, we are afraid that kid is going to die, we are afraid to take her. And my aunt said, you must take her because well, we, we cannot go back with her, we have, you have to take her. So they agreed. And my aunt left, and this Nicola left. And we stayed with them, and we were exhausted. We went to bed, trying to stay, we went to bed. And the next morning I woke, and... Um, it was a different world. There was a mountain and the sun and a chicken everywhere and a dog and a cat. And it was a paradise. It was arrived in paradise. No mother, no father. And this wonderful couple who didn't have children who loved us. And we stayed there for three years. There was no war, no, nothing. And then she took us to the she took us to the to to, to church. We used to go to they didn't have water, so we never washed. So there was a pump outside. And Sunday, Sunday morning we used to put her in the bath before going to church. And uh, and uh, we and then she took us to the nun, the Catholic, the, the, the girls were with the nun. 
there were 12, 13 girls. I was the youngest. And the nun were very, very nice. They knew I was Jewish, of course. They knew I was Jewish. And did the children know you were Jewish? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Never talked about it. I was going to, to uh, it was three kilometers from the, from three kilometers from the thing, going in the snow, in my, I never missed one day of school. I love that life. I love that life. I love these people. There was a virgin in the, in the, in the church, which is today there also. And I prayed to her, please give me my, my daughter, give me my, my mother, give me my, my mother. And, uh, and, we, and we were very happy. We used to, uh, three times, twice a year, we used to go and, and learn the first testament. And, uh, and the church, on Sunday there was a church, the mass, and the priest was very, very nice. He used to, to, dig, to, to uh, talk to the people there. You know, the Jewish people are in uh, the parade. Please help them. The priest was very nice. I will show, I will read to you a letter which was read, read now, now by some, the man who found me, I, I, which is incredible. I'll, I'll read to you. Um, and I stayed there until uh, uh, then. And my father used to appear from time to time. But he never told us where he was because he didn't want if one day the German would catch us, he didn't want us to know where he was. He used to appear from time to time. He was hiding also, working in the forest. I didn't know exactly what he was doing. But he used to appear from time to time, but he never... And when you saw him, it, it must have been very emotional when he used to come. No, because he was not a very uh, em tender, emotional man. He was not, uh, no, he was very cold. He was, he must have suffered very much, he was very cold. But he spoke, I have, I have, for some, nobody has, I have the voice of these people, of these people who saved us. I have a voice, because, because, in uh, 78, 79, when I declared them to be, um, to be, accepted by Yad Vashem as just among the nation, uh, there was a man who came here and who said they have been accepted as just among the nation. And then he said, in 78-79, Klarsfeld has discovered that my, my mother and my brother were killed in Auschwitz. I did not know before. Okay? So this is Klarsfeld. And then, we went to, there was a big ceremony at Vashem and uh, my father, my, my husband took photos. This was, can I just ask, Betty, this was the first time that you heard yes. that for yeah, yeah, definitively yeah, yeah, that yeah, you're... Yeah, yeah, I didn't know before. It must have been devastating. Yeah, I didn't know before. But I did, what I did before, I used to talk to children on my little, my wonderful life as a little girl looking after the cow, running in that village, being a paysan. I used to give a lot of lectures. I took a course to Yad Vashem, how to tell the story. How to tell the story to children. I'd never had doll, now I collect dolls. How to talk to children, to soldiers. And I was, it was a week with psychologists. It was very difficult. I was the youngest there because there was women, people who had been in camps, people with numbers on their thing. There was a woman carrying bread. And I was the youngest one there. Uh, because people were being in camps, I hadn't been in the camps. So, so I used to give a lot of lectures to Yad and Yad Vashem was invited me to talk. Now I don't talk to children, I talk to more important people like ambassadors and, <laughs> and the, uh, the mayor of Jew. No, I don't, I'm, I'm invited a lot, but I, and um, so, so, but it was, so then there was a ceremony in Yad Vashem where I accepted a certificate, which I'll show you later on. And in 80, the ceremony was in 81, I think, 81, yes. In 82, we decided, David and me, to go to visit them and give them a certificate. So this was there. So this is the picture you have before. This is the picture I had before, so yes. If you could just explain who's in this picture, it's a very special picture. Yes. So you are the little girl here, and my brother, and these and these are the, child, the people who saved us, Victor and Josephine Guichard, and his mother, and his 
sister and the couple who used to live in Lyon who used to come to visit and they took the picture they took the picture you know they took a picture and you run after that and you and the, the behind and they took a picture okay and this picture had been used now recently in August had been had been used I'll, 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 I'll tell you about, I'll tell you this after I'll tell you this after what year was the picture taken um I must have been uh, 40, 42, 45, I think. Because we were there until until 42, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We, lived, we were three years with them, from beginning, end of, end of uh, September 42, until uh, the beginning of September 40, 2, 3, 4, 5, 45. So this had been 44. So, but can you show us in the picture the 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 couple that saved you? Um, Where are they in the picture? This, the two here. The two on the top. Wow. They were, they were our parents. They were always my parents. The truth is, it was very dangerous what they did. <laughs> Extremely dangerous. Of course. They they could have been killed. I, I, if they would I, have I'll been. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened. And this is when you went to see them. Uh, so then, then I gave them. We gave them. So then we went to see them, and with my my husband, and my husband had a tape recorder. He put the tape recorder on the table. So this is in 1986. No, in 82. No, 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 no. This is no, no. This is uh, ah, no, no, no. It's a mistake. It was in, in 82. In it's, a it's a mistake. It's a mistake. It's a So you went to see them, and this is a picture of. Oh. Of them, she was already sick. She was in a in a very well, and uh, I've got I've got their voice here. Okay, I'll, 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 but that voice which my husband recorded on on on, on cassette and then on on CD. I've got the which the man now. I will talk to her about that man, the incredible man now. Betty, can I just ask? Did you always keep in touch with him after the war? Yes, always, 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 always. And I always go to the village. I always put flowers on their grave. I've never been to my father's grave in the Valenciennes. But I'm going to go to them. They are my parents. They are my. They never had children. Mm -hmm. And in '45, when my father came to take us, it was the end of our life. It was terrible. It, I, I, they didn't want to leave us, and I didn't want to leave them. It was there. They always stayed. They, they are my parents. I regret because after that, after the war, my father took us. He didn't have a life. He didn't have. He wanted to marry, to to make his life again. If he couldn't take care of us, he he took us. He put me in uh, my aunt took care of us for a year. Then he put us in a in a boarding school. I was in one of the eleven best boarding school of France, and this is why I I, I was very unhappy. And my brother went to a boys' school, and I was to a girls' school. It was a lycée de Valenciennes where uh, there was girls of ministers and uh, girls. My father wanted us to be French. He wanted to be f uh, French. We'd never had any Jewish education. And in, in Dulin had a Catholic education. I'd never been to a, to a, I'd never been to a synagogue. When you were growing up, did you have a traditional home? No, uh, no, 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 no. No, there was there was a Be, war. But was, before the war, did no, 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 no. Did your mother like no, candles? No, 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 never, 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 never. They must have come from background that didn't have also. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Never. They they used to to have a Christmas. The, the Catholics could, they, and and after that I became I was a Catholic. But this couple were always saying to us, "Don't forget you are Jewish." That's that's incredible. Wow. Don't forget you are Jewish. Always, but we were Catholic. We were Catholic, and I loved it. I loved going to church. And now I'll show you something incredible. But Betty, can I just ask you: When your father came, it must have been very hard to to leave the the, the couple. Terrible, terrible. There, there, I was with Anne for a year, and after that, he put us to the school, which is very. I got a very good education. 
uh, studying English and studying Latin, because I was very bad in mathematics, so studying Latin. At the age of 12, 11, 12, I could translate from Latin to French the Battle of Caesar, I'm telling you. And then I had to study German. This is why I speak a lot of languages. And studying German after the war was very difficult for me. I wanted to study Spanish or Italian, it was German. So I was, and there was a girl of school, we, I studied very, very, very hard. And I had, I was very, very miserable, very unhappy. Because nobody ever came to see me, you know, in, in, uh, oh, there was a third of the parents used to come to the girls and, uh, and, and bring them cakes and chocolate. Nobody ever came to see me. And your father, did he come and visit? No, 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 no. On Sunday, Saturday night, we used to go uh, to, to spend a day at home. And my father and remarried. When I was 14, a woman I didn't like. She didn't like me, I didn't like her. I was very unhappy. And your brother, did you see him a lot? Yeah, he only, only once a week. He was also very unhappy. He was also, we were very unhappy children. And this was, a, I, I was in boarding school until I was 18. And did your father have more children? No, in his no, age? no, 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 no. He, he, he wanted us to be French. He wanted us to be French. He didn't want to be a... Uh, he wanted us to be French, you know, France was fantastic, not like today. After the war, I don't know. And when did you go and visit um, Josephine and Victor? All the time. Even I, I, when no, you no, were... No. I went, the first time is when Yaron, my son was seven, when David was from Scotland, so we used to go a lot to Scotland. He was very much in touch with his, with his, with his mother. She died in 96, 97, we used to go in Glasgow. So when my son was seven, uh, I was I took him to Paris. David was stayed in Glasgow. My my daughter was three, three and a half at the time, and I went to Paris. And then I decided to go to visit them alone. And this was a fantastic visit. My my I'll give you a site, internet site. But David wrote. You can read a lot about it. Um, he, he wrote a site called um, Hidden Roots. Nekuda.org and he wrote a lot about this with pictures, a lot of pictures. He, he worked a lot. He did that without me. I was working as a, as a secret for me. One day I came back from work and he put this in front of the computer and read and it's fa fabulous. But Betty, can I ask, when you were a teenager, did your father take you to visit them or did you have no, contact? No, 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 no. I was, no, no, I, I was in school at 18. Then I started, uh, uh, Valenciennes is very known for a, a school of art. There was a very good art school. Watteau and Carpeau were born there. And uh, I studied art and I became, a, I, I started making a window dresser. So when I decided that I didn't like Valenciennes and I didn't like my mother, my dead mother, and I realized that I wanted to go somewhere, I wanted to leave. So I, st I worked to Paris to the, this uh, Le Bon Marché, which is one of the best um, shopping, uh, uh, fantastic shop in Paris. And I asked them to do a stage and I spent a year in Paris doing the windows in Paris, which was a, I rented the room. I was not happy, but uh, I rented the room and the work was very good. And then at one point, my brother came with a, with a, there was a trip organized to Israel by the, by the Les étudiants juifs de France, the Jewish students of France, like the term Taglit here, you know, a trip like this, on a boat. And all those young people were 19, 20, like me, and they were all kids of people who had born uh, children, and there was a fantastic atmosphere, and we arrived in Mishmar Negev, in the Negev. And there was a f speaking French school, with, uh, speaking French, very nice kibbutz, and I really liked the atmosphere of the kibbutz. And, uh, but I, and the, the, we had lectures, and of course this the kibbutz saw these lovely p young people, uh, of, of people wanted to, to attract us, but I realized that uh, the kibbutz was not a future for me. But I got attached to from when the boat left after we took us in truck to to Elat and to Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and around the country like we do too. And I felt something about that country. I felt there was no no religious at all there, no religious, completely free kibbutz, completely free. 
and I liked it. It was I liked it, and I met. You never had Shabbat, or no, no, completely. This country was completely non-religious. You know that completely non-religious, not like it is today. Um, I'm really non-religious. No, and uh, we worked. We get up early. It was August, and when the, the boat left, I felt that I had something in that country. I felt. So I went back, and the year after that, I, I went back and I went back, and I told my father that I wanted to go to Israel. He said, oh, "Why? New Year, New Year? I want you to marry here. We have to take my shop because my brother was studying medicine. He wanted me, and I said, "No, I don't want to stay here. I don't like Valenciennes. I don't want to stay there." And um, and I said, and I and he said to me, I said, "That I said you you have left Poland." When you were young, I, I also want my life. So he said, he said to me, uh, he helped me to send that trunk, and he said to me, if one day you got married, I will buy you an apartment. He said that, and I, 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 I met a, a kibbutz a, a woman who helped me to find a woman. I, I went to four months. I had enough money to study four months in Ulpan Akiva in Natanya. So I, so so I decided to leave. I left without money, money, no money, no money, no language, nothing, nothing. People say you make aliyah. I, say, I never made aliyah. I came with a tourist visa. I never made aliyah. I came with a tourist visa. So I made ulpan, and when I moved to ulpan, I I was looking for a job, and uh, I uh, rented a room in Tel Aviv, and I met this this woman who was fantastic. We knew all the artists in Tel Aviv, and she introduced me to Bachiba de Rothschild, and I started working there. That's how I met my husband there. And uh, but you know, my husband he also he came back. His father died when he was twelve or thirteen, and he also didn't have a, a religious background. And one day, when my my son, who was fifty something today, went to to went to 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 get, I threw a gamelet lighting candles. And I said to my husband, you know, I think it would be a good idea if we start lighting candles. So we started lighting candles then. We bought the candles. And, uh, and, uh, and today, you know, I gave the same, uh, the same uh, uh, education I got. We got, we did my, we, uh, early day we don't go to synagogue, but we made Pesach and uh, Hanukkah and all that. We gave that to our children and, uh, and the, sh the children, my children have the same thing as us. They don't. They're not religious, but they do Very Friday night traditional. tradition, but no religious. It's just like us. We gave that to our children. I will show you. Uh, 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 I will and show Betty, you. I just have to mention because uh, it's so important. It was Mark Shagal that made your shidduch, that yeah. made the connection. Yeah, 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 yes. I, I was in that shop, and uh, and mm -hmm. one day. We have a telephone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one day, um, I was in that shop. I met Martha Graham, and I met all the important people. You know who is that? That man who went to Egypt. There was a man who went to Egypt alone with his plane. You remember? In '64, '65, there was a man who came. Forgot his name. He went to Egypt alone to try to meet. Okay. Anyway, there were they. All the artists who were there, imp were important today, used to come there. It was a beautiful shop beautiful shop and uh, I used to design the shop made windows and and I meet people and I love that job and I never been to Jerusalem I only met one to Jerusalem I only came to Jerusalem with that student I never been to Jerusalem I used to live in Tel Aviv so I worked and worked I worked at nine to four uh, until seven o'clock I would uh, and uh, I never come to Jerusalem and suddenly uh, this uh, 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 Marc Chagall uh, said, uh, Marc Chagall, uh, you know, you have a friend? And uh, I said, yeah, but I'm not sure. So I said, he's a uh, uh, journalist who interviewed last night at the Knesset. And, uh, and uh, uh, on the radio I heard, I'm with Marc Chagall. And Marc Chagall, I asked him a question in English and he answered in Yiddish. And Marc Chagall said, he's very nice. And we got in for, for and I tell you what is happening today. I had so many trouble with the rabbi, rabbi when, when we went on for two years together. David, I was in Jerusalem, and I was in Tel Aviv. He was in Jerusalem at the radio. And one day at uh, 12 o'clock on the first, uh, 31st of, uh, um, 31st of 
May 40, 66, 65, he says to me, let's get married. So the next day I had a friend of me with telephone. I went and phoned my father and he phoned his mother. We started to get married and he started to realize with a rabbinate. And I went to the rabbinate. I didn't have any proof that I was Jewish. He had a letter from the synagogue from Glasgow. I didn't, and the, the rabbi said, no, no, we are near not Jewish. We don't want, we, we want to prove that. I have no proof. I've never been to, I've never been to, to, to class, to, 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 I don't know. I've never been to the synagogue. So they refused. So I said to David, okay, let's go and marry in Cyprus. They don't want to. So David said, let's try again. So I uh, went again and I shouted at the rabbi. I said, Hashem Sheli is a left COVID. The Kolabish Parasheli Neil Mubishwa, and he loved that if they don't speak of him. So we'll just translate that. You told me. I, say, I said to them, my name is Lefkovitz. All my family disappeared in the Shoah. I don't know where. Is this not, not enough for you? I'm not Jewish for you? And this is why, this is why, this is what happened. And we got married in a small wedding in Tel Aviv. And this is why I have problem with the rabbinate, with, with the religious. This is why I have problem with the religious. And I will re send you, read you a letter a man who discovered me, which is read in the church now, now, by the priest in the church, and you will understand my, my you will understand my uh, relation with a Catholic, and why I have problem with, with the Jews, because of that, with, with the religious, not with the Jew, with the, with the extra religious, I've got problem, because they made me so many trouble, I mean, I didn't want to get married, because I had no proof, I was not Jewish. And but eventually they accepted and, and actually I got, we got married, yeah, in a small, we got married. But now, the important question is what happened now. Four Could you read the letter? Four years ago. Four years. Now, what happened is that for many years I didn't talk. I, I told, told, spoke to children out of my lovely little, my, ah, I'll show you something. I. A few years ago, my daughter-in-law was a, is a psychologist. She worked in a school, and the teacher was French, and uh, the, 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 they were making a project on hidden children in France. And my daughter-in-law said to the teacher, oh, my mother-in-law was a child in France. So the teacher, uh, she said, can I talk? So the teacher called me, would I come to speak to the class? I'll bring you the, the thing after that. And uh, the kids were 14, 15, and they were making a project on hidden children. And I had a love story with these children. They really did so many things. My husband was, was there. So my husband had written a lot of things. So I sent things which were translated in Hebrew, and they made something. And on the day of the Shoah, where there is that ceremony in Roglit, the class of children were there. And at one point they said, uh, we want Mrs. Apple. So they gave me the review that they did with drawings and that. And I came home and I cried. They did some incredible thing, which I will show you after that. But I only really spoke to children. I never spoke, because I didn't know what happened after. I didn't know, I didn't know exactly the dates where my mother were arrived to Auschwitz. I knew it was Auschwitz. I knew it was Malin, the camp in Belgium. But I did not want to know. And my husband was protecting me. He did not want me to to see certain films. Like I never saw the list of Spiel, the list of uh, the film that Spielberg did. They came to interview. Schindler's list. Schindler's list. I never saw it. I didn't want to see it. And I, I never, I, I never want to see it. Certain film I didn't want to see. Now I, now I see. It. I've worked a lot, a lot, a lot because of one man. Now, what happened is that four years ago. I received on Facebook a um, thing from somebody called Frédéric Pellisson from Dulin, the village I was was called Dulin in France, that he, had found, he has found me and he wants me to be in touch with him. So I called and he said, my name is Frédéric Pellisson, I've been looking for you for five years because I saw that in the village there was this couple who was just among the nation, I wanted to know who was and I found you. She said it was a Thursday night, could you come on Tuesday? I've created an association called Memoir 
août 1942, Memory, August 1942. And uh, we begin with association. And I would like to invite you, this was four years ago, before the corona. And uh, I said, well, it's Thursday, the kids are coming, they can't come. So he said, it's only the beginning. Okay, now, they had this Saturday's reunion. Now, um, last year, last year, this date from 30 September, um, the 23rd of July 2020. So it's uh, six years, uh, okay. We were with the corona and we were completely locked in under Nathaniel. Yeah. Locked in. No, the beginning, no good. I got this letter from this man, Nicolas Pen. Bonjour Betty. Here the information which had been transmitted by the charge of the Memorial de Bill Moline. The document is in, is in, uh, I hope, uh, I, I, I had problem if I would send it to you or not because it is difficult. But uh, we are, in France, we are doing some research now. And uh, it talks about the virus. And he sent me that. So what happened that? This information are coming from a memorial, the Malin in Belgium, 17th of September 2020. Okay. Cher Monsieur Pellisson, not me. The thing is between him. We have received your question and we are we thank you for your interest. We hope sincerely that the information and document will be useful in your in your uh, Um about, about the transport list, we don't have many documents about Perla and Maurice. We have two photos. There's a photo that you have here. Okay, the, this photo. Okay, the photo of the baby here. No, no. No, 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 no. Please. No, no. Uh, this is a picture of... Yeah. We have this photo. Okay. Uh, they are not in too good quality. If you have a better, yeah, but we would be interested to have it. We have in the muse our museum a wall with more than 20,000 pictures of deportees. The list of deportation, KD013, the list from German deportation were realized in the camp in the caserne dossier in Malin, and I've got a picture of Malin, and the uh, Jewish secretary were forced to do this work under the control of the SS of the camp. The Anate au Crayon is, and he gives me all this with the name of my mother. in front between him and him okay and here is a picture of my mother and my brother so they had been doing all this research and um i knew nothing you didn't know that they were taken to auschwitz auschwitz yes i knew but, but i you didn't know. know when you didn't know no Yes, all the and this is really recent. This is really recent. This is recent. So, this it says that it's all in French. Huh? Um, this you can consult. Okay, if you come here. Explication of a mention KV Keine Vorla is in real German. Uh, the name of a person arrested are Mark Kein, no, no invitation. Um, this abbreviation 
means that the people had no received convocation for work. Perla Levkovich Blumstein and her son Maurice Michel had arrest, were arrested the 12th of 942 during the big raffle in the north of France. That raffle was organized by the, by the German police and helped by the French gendarmerie. More than 500 Jews were arrested together that day, that day, uh, and 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 uh, sent um, to Malines in Belgium. De Malines, Perla, and Maurice were put on the transport X, destination of auschwitz bichmann the 15 942, which means they were taken for three days. They were in, arrived in that camp, and the 15 they arrived in Germany. The transport left in a wagon of third class Auschwitz. Uh, 1047 deportees arrived in destination the 17942. They debarked, they arrived on the Juden Ramp, the lieu de débarquement situated in Auschwitz, between the camp of Auschwitz and Birkenau. At the end of the selection, 716 of the Jews of this transport were assassinated immediately in the installation de, gara, de gardage de Birkenau, the bunker, red house and bunker two, white house. 331 deportés were put to work. Only 25 between us were still in life in 45. Pour Perla, for Perla Levkovic, Blumstein, her uh, name in the Magnetian, and Maurice Levkovic, I don't find any act of, of death established in Auschwitz. No number of uh, identification. In absence of these documents, which haven't been kept completely, because many have been destroyed by the Nazi during the evacuation final of Auschwitz Birkenau in January 45. We cannot know m any many more circumstances, lieu and that. But the probability of a wom young woman and a young man were, d were taken to the camp to the work is very weak. Mm -hmm. It is probably that we gas immediately mm -hmm. at the arrival in Auschwitz. I hope this information you have, we have your help. Cordialement, Gunther Bababa. I read this. This must have been... Listen. Devastating. Listen. I read this. It's uh, what, uh, in the evening, alone in front of the computer. We are in completely... Uh, we cannot go out. Become sick. I become sick. I start taking a bottle of whiskey, and 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 it was evening, and uh, went to sleep, and I became sick. I call. It was Thursday night, thirtieth mm -hmm. September, twenty twenty. Yeah, we are uh, three years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. The next morning, I call my son, and he lives in Arda. I said, Yaroni, I've got this. This was Thursday night. This was Friday. Friday. I said, Yaroni, I've got to come to speak to you. I am. So I told him I received this from Frédéric Pellisson. He had heard of Frédéric Pellisson before. And uh, I, I am really sick. I've got to speak to you. I can't. He said, Ima, you cannot come. You're going to be arrested by the police. I said, I don't care. Let them put them in jail. I've got a card of a Holocaust survivor. I don't care because there's nobody on the road. So I said, I'm coming. So I, I drove to them Friday night, and before dinner, I told them that. He said, Ima, you have to see a psychologist. I said, no, I don't want to see a psychologist. I'm going to work up. And from then, I started working on myself. Everything that I want, didn't want to know before, everything which was related to Auschwitz, I went to the computer, and I read and I read and I discovered and, and I found myself and I then I called Steve it's Steve Lindy Steve Lindy and I said Steve you come 
come to a, come to a, so I told him, I invited him for dinner, and he came, and I told him a story, and he wrote the second article, the other one, I think. This was in the Jerusalem Report? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote this one. The first one was called Angels in the South. Yes. And the title of this one was Jerusalem, our Betty Apple recalls how she and her younger brother were hidden during the Shoah by a Christian couple in on a French farm. Yeah, this is, this is the first one, which did from, okay. And this is the second one from the editor, which he, he, he talks about this, this, this article. They say it relates how Betty's mother and brother Monk were transferred to Mali and the transport. I think I can, I've, I've got, I've got a review, I think I can give you copies, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. <coughs> and... And this was the article that yes. he wrote in the Jerusalem Report. Yes. And this is in November of 2020. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After I told him, I, it's, it's because, but I, since that, I've really changed because I work, I didn't want to see a psychologist and I worked on myself. I worked on myself so much that everything which was really torture, I discovered things there was a cross in Oshfim, there was a there was a nuns who were there and a, a lot of a lot of stories. There was this man, we know this this Evek of Paris who was Jewish and uh, he became a cardinal and he was a friend of the Pope. Listigay. That's right. He was older than me, he was Jewish and and uh, he and he listened to that's right, just again. And um, I read about him and his father didn't want him to be a, to be a very, he wanted to be, and he said to his father, I can be Jewish and Catholic in the same time. And uh, he went to see the Pope in Rome, and the Pope discovered, discovered, they discovered there was, they, 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 they were in Auschwitz, where the gas chamber was, there were, there was a thing of nuns, and then after that they took a lot of things. I read a lot of things about Auschwitz, and, and I really worked on myself. And Lusinga had said to, uh, when he died, he wanted to have a Kaddish done uh, read on him, and his his coffin was at Notre Dame, and he was, you know, a lot. I read so much, and I, this is the story, made me change completely. And that man, that man, Frédéric Pelisson, has created this association, which is called. Uh, 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 association memory August 1945 and last I went twice last year uh, last year we gave the medal to the village because um, 20 kilometers from there there was a, me a name called Isieu and in Isieu there was a house with 44 Jewish children uh, were and they were taken by Barbie, the same Barbie that that Beat Clarksfeld went to arrest in South America. This Barbie uh, came, Barbie sent the Gestapo and they sent his 44 children to Auschwitz. And a few days after that, Barbie sent the Gestapo to take me and my brother. And my brother. Uh, my, uh, and they put us, they had a table, a special table, which you open, it's called a Petra, and you put flour, and, and they put us inside us, and they knocked, the guest of Belgium knocked at every door, and nobody talked in the village. So last year, I gave, last August, yes, last August, um, first of all, this man, Victor Guichet, had, he wa when I planted the tree, he was supposed to get a medal, but he said, I don't want a medal, I didn't need a medal, I didn't do that for a medal, and we love these children, I didn't do this for a medal. So he refused a medal. And what I did, what I did... This is Victor Vichel. Victor Vichel, <coughs> yeah. And I was very close to him. Can I just ask, Betty, how did you get them Chassidim Motalam? Because it's also righteous amongst the nation. No, you go it's to the Yad Vashem and they and do they some research. They accepted research. straight away. Yeah, yeah, they, they, it took some time. It took some time. And then somebody came and they had been accepted at that. And there's a, 
in 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 Yad Vashem there is a there is a plaque there with yeah. their name, and this is just in front of a train. You know, there's a train there. Yeah. So the train is deaf, and my little plaque is just in front. And I go to Yad Vashem, and I whenever I go there, and I I watch over. And they, I've asked them the Shem to check because it's it's in bad state now. They are talking about they, they are working. So what I did, I called Yad Vashem, and I said I've got a letter from him saying that. Um, in the spring, uh, his wife was already dead because they went they went to an old age home. His wife was dead, and and uh, I will if you insist, I will accept the medal. But uh, in a very modest ceremony in my home, after the, in the spring after the snow has, has gone, so what I did, I called Yad Vashem. This is recent, recent. I called Yad Vashem and I said, look, I am with them, the computer, I said, you know, you see that they never got the medal. I really want the medal now. So, in Hebrew I spoke, yeah? They said, you can have a medal, it must be somebody from their family. So I called Frédéric Pellisson, mm -hmm. and Frédéric Pellisson found a nephew of her, I've got a photo somewhere, a photo of her, and uh, she wrote a letter to Yad Vashem that Betty and me, uh, Betty and me, we will, uh, we will, uh, we would like to give a medal. I'm going to bring the picture. Okay, stop. I'm going to bring the picture. So this is a picture of Marlene in in, in Belgium. Belgium. Yes. This is a picture of France. How France was, you know, this occupied. Is divided by the free yes. zone in the. This how the north and the south. This is a Petra. This is my my when we went. This is my granddaughter. She's now in the army. That is a Petra where where we were hidden. This is uh, ten years. That ago. is where that is when you you went back to the house. And when we were children then. And you were hidden inside there. Yes. Okay, this is a brooch. I think I'll do that. Oh, okay. You see there was an invitation? Okay. So this is last year. You see giving the medal to the village. This is when you gave the medal. And this was, you see, this is... And the, the somebody comes from the Israeli embassy as well? Yes, she came from, this woman, she came from the Israeli embassy. Yes, and this is, and it was in, the, in that village, there was an Israeli flag and a French flag. And my, and... Uh, Yes, and she, they sent somebody from the French Israeli embassy and she wrote me a fantastic letter. This, first of all, everything was in French. And this is, uh, then, then, this is last year, 18 of August 2031, yeah, last year. Uh, she gave me her card and I asked her, because it was in French, if she, ge she could give a few words in Hebrew for my children. So she said to my children, and then I came home and I wrote her a letter. Bonjour, Madame Gambour, or can I show you Delphine? I would like to, to thank you personally and also in the name of Frédéric Pellisson, this extraordinary man of a ceremony of the Saint August Noble, um, that my my village have been uh, that the have been that you I want to thank you for have been come to this your participation has been very very remarkable. As I told you, I only spent three years in Dulin, but this year stayed the best year of my life. This ceremony should have been last year, but because of the corona, it was only this year, and now the COVID. So we are all with masks there. I'm very happy that the, my son and his family came and they were very moved to see the Israeli flag 
and the and the French flag with the Israeli in and the Marseillaise city it was like the Olympics uh, game of Tokyo and when the Kaddish of Ravel was sung by this man this ceremony had been transmitted on French television and also in the in the paper I showed the article in the paper yeah. here the paper you see last year okay um, Um, okay, this organization memoir of that Frédéric Pellisson is a president does incredible things now to help children in Syria. I give money, okay. I've uh, met some of the members, it's really remarkable. When you see what happened in Afghanistan, this, this world has become crazy. You told me that you will come back next year to Jerusalem or ministry. I will be very happy to meet you. I'm still quite well known there because I taught French during 20 years. Until last year, two of my students have been, um, Alita Ben Noun, who is now came back from Paris, and the last one is Gila Benyakov, which is our um, ambassador in Finland, Helsinki, in, in Estonia. Until the year of the Shoah, I'm very well many asked to ask me to give conferences and this year I've been invited by Zikaran de Salon I've given a conference to the Minister of um, uh, um, foreign, foreign Ministry where I spoke in front of 20 ambassadors who were in Israel and there was a very interesting debate my last intervention was in Dulin was in Toronto by Zoom where I spoke about you can see it on Google, interview Betty Appel for liberation. Okay, je m'excuse, blah, 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 blah. And she wrote me a very nice letter saying, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really very busy. She wrote me a very nice letter saying, uh, wait a minute, she, where is that thing she sent me? Ah, Delphine, dear Betty, thousand thank you for your mail who touched me very much you are an incredible lady an example for resilience a source of inspiration your enthusiasm and your 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 joy of life your energy your community energy extraordinary has really hit me and gave me a lesson of life in coming back home I spoke about you and a ceremony to my children. I've got three boys. I will contact you with a immense pleasure when I will be in Israel. Feel well and, and please continue to be who you are, to do what you are until 120. Thank you for this incredible energy that you've transmitted. I kiss you. A bientôt les trout. It's beautiful, sir. Huh? Very special. It's very, right? And it's so true. It's all so true. Yeah, so, so I continue, I've got a lot of documentary, I do a lot, a lot of things. But, so this year, so this was last year. Now this year, this year, um, we went and there was an invitation for the, we did a, a arbor of memory. And this is the, where's my telephone? This is the, okay, this year, this is okay the association and the, the, this was on the wall everywhere in okay and, and can I just ask you Betty in this picture this is you the bottom one it's you and, and my brother was this, this, is, this is this is when my father came to get us in 45 so that was in 45 45 now what he did we didn't have nice clothes I had two dresses but he he took us, they asked us, they asked to have a photo of us. So my father had brought night clothes and he took us to a photograph in the village and took a photo. And this is a photo that is 45. In 45, my brother and I. Now what? 
this year now okay this is this is the tree which was made this year and you know, I met I, I met a lot of people there and and this is last year okay there's a man there who says to me you know I say shall I have a picture on my fridge I see you <laughs> every I see you every day on your pictures on my fridge that's wonderful now uh, now I will t read you something I will show you a picture of a tree and after that we will go to the room but I'll read you something incredible and we'll understand why I am so furious with uh, extra religious and why I'm so close to the to Catholics. Um, the 4th of September now my granddaughter Roni went to the army okay I was in the village and uh, there is a church there the people don't go to church really they're not very, yeah. very practical there's a priest one week there's a bath in one church and then in another village but happened the 4th of September there was a mass there so I went with Frédéric and the lady I was staying with a lovely lovely lady which had a, a lived in the school I went to next to the church we went together and there was a mass and the people go there and you know and it reminded very much um, people say Amen because they bless the uh, they drink wine and they bless the blood the wine like the blood of Jesus like we do a Kaddish of the wine and people say Amen and then they gave you hosti you know they used to do it in the mouth but now because of the Corona they live in the people and it's made with uh, matzah it's something like, like a wafer that. <laughs> yeah and uh, it's like we bless the Kala in a, in, a, in a way, it reminded me. And people say Amen. Say Amen. And after that, the priest um, said something about the couple who were in the village and, and kept and saved two Jewish children. He said, and all the people who were in the church are people of a village. They know me. I'm very known there. It's my village. It's my village. And after that, Frédéric Pellisson was sitting next to me read a letter I will translate it in, in ladies ladies and gentlemen dear friends 80 years ago almost day for day in September 42 the couple Josephine and Victor Guichard welcome at their place in Dulin two Jewish children Betty seven and Jack five years old these children were running away with their father, having escaped to the raft of Valenciennes, in which their mother, Perla, and her petit frère, Maurice Michel, two years, were été arrested and killed in Auschwitz. Betty and Jacques were hosted and educated during three years here in Dulin. Josephine and Victor Guichet have been recognized just among the nation in 1979 among the ceremony of memorial de Yad Vashem at Jerusalem. Who saves lives saves humanity. Bible. 80 years after, the hidden child is here today among us and she is here at home. Betty Appel has come back very often to see her savior and until the end of her life. Uh, indefinite link attach us her to the couple Gisher but also to the village in this Sunday 4 September 2022 we give homage to the just of Dulin who have risked their life to protect and save two Jewish children uh, pursued by the barbarie Nazi the protector silence of the habitants of the village had been a luck, a big luck for us. Let us also afford for the curé, for the priest of Paris, Auguste Paraway. He went to look for him, for the, the, the priest. He didn't find him, but I didn't, I didn't remember his name, but he did. Who has worked to help Jews hidden in the village 
and and I demanded here, here, to these people of Ville to help Jews. Betty Apple witness every time she came to tell her life of a little paysan that she lived during three years in Dulin. Her témoignage and her resistance faced the barbary has have had an inspiration for the young people. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you, Victor. Eighty years later, the walls of his church ring of their memories. I thank you, Frédéric Pellisson, 3922. It's a beautiful, what a beautiful message. It's incredible. He is a fantastic man. Here's the picture of what special people. He is a fantastic man. But what I discovered, what I discovered, now, do you understand why this letter, why I work so much on myself, and why I am different now? You ask Steve. Steve stayed, but I'm very, I, I feel much younger, much stronger than I did because when I got this information that I didn't want to get. You know, I, I met somebody once at, at the cinema tech, he said, Marlene, you know, cool. And I didn't want, but he sent me this, he did it. He is doing so many things. And there's a few people like this in France, in the village who are doing a lot of things, a, a lot of people. But can I ask, when, you, when your children were growing up, did you ever tell them that you no. were a survivor? No. Or did you ever discuss no. the war, you, what no. happened? No, 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 no. When did they first find out? No, they knew that I was uh, uh, in that village and I was a little painter, but I, they knew that I was but they didn't want to... They, when my grandchildren were six or seven, I went to speak to the, to the school, but I told, always talked about the, my life as a little girl in the village looking after the cars, which I loved. I'll, I'll show you what the kids of the village did uh, uh, when, I, when my... Uh, so, Betty, this is something that the school children can as well... I, Made I told you, you that, uh, uh, this was about 20 years ago, my, my daughter-in-law was a psychologist in that school and she said to the, there was a woman making a project on hidden children in the shore and she said, my mother-in-law, so, so I went, I accepted to go and, and we had a love story with children. And after that, in Roglic, they, they made, there's a few people, but they made a thing about Betty Apple, okay? They either had Betty Apple in Hebrew. And I send a lot of people that my husband has written and he translated in English. Uh, my, hus my husband has really written a lot. And these kids, they wrote, your man shall Betty Apple. And they, they said how... That's the diary of Betty Apple. Diary. And, they, and they, they, did, they did drawings with children. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look, look. That is really, really so special. Israeli children. That's amazing. It's Israeli children. And and then the after that they they, they presented their project to Yad Vashem. A Yad Vashem every year has got something and there was a big ceremony at Vashem with very VIP and there were screens and my my project got the first prize over Pras Rishon, the first prize of all the schools of Israel, and they got 5,000 shekel. Wow, that's amazing. You see? Pras Rishon, wow. You see? That's so special, Mr. Rishon. You see? And I only talked about my childhood. I didn't talk, I, I, they, they, they wrote, uh, a letter to Yom Rishon, Yom Sheni, Ima Sheli, Ima, Aniko Kamisera, Shatlopo. We, at, you will never, know, well, you, you, you will you never know my, you will never know my husband. You will never know my children. I miss you so much. They imagine, and they wrote a man. A diary. They, 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 wrote, they wrote, and they did a <coughs> the children of the village did that. This is in France, in, in your village? Yes, we did that. For Betty? For, for Betty, Betty, with a picture of them and him. And they put leaves, and on every leaves, there's a plaque in Yad Vashem. And every leaf, is a po there is a poem. You see, they put leaves. On every leaf, there is a poem. Look. That is so beautiful. Every leaves, 
They, they put a poem. That the, the, the children made? The children made the teacher, of course. Yeah. But they made this and it, I'll show you on the computer. Betty, that is so special. The, 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 you know, this Frédéric Pellisson is an incredible man. And this year, we, so last year we had the tree. My telephone. It's so special what they did here. Okay. This is the picture. <laughs> Can ask, is this the is this the house? Yes. Yes. This is the house that no, you were staying like, in. Look. Has did your brother also keep in touch with the family? Uh not like that. Not like me, no. No. This is a church. This is a church, the village. And it's the original church? Yeah, 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 it's the there. This is a virgin which I used to pray, it's still there. It's still there. And the church is beautiful, the church is beautiful. And I'm going back this year. Because this year we're having... Sure there's some video here. I'll show you. Photos. Beautiful what the children have done, writing these beautiful poems. Fantastic, huh? It's, it's so... It's no, there are, and there, are, there are very few stories like that, though, which are really a beautiful story. And I came out, I come out really... Uh, okay. This is... Look, this is this here. And this is, this is, uh, a journalist interviews me after the ceremony. And is that a monument in the background? There's a monument in the tree. It's the tree. Is this in the village? It's near the village. And here they come.
this is now my son it you use me listen listen This is the house. Oh, this, so this is this is the tree, this is the tree of memory. This is the tree of memory. And my name is now one of the leaf. It's called L'Arbre de la Mémoire. My tree, here it is. Here it is. Wait a minute. Here it is. I don't know if you can see. It's a beautiful memorial. And it's continuing because next year they got money from yeah, everybody got money and they got money from a memorial de la Shoah in Paris and then the people gave money and it was a fantastic tree with all the leaves because uh, in this village in near the village near the lake there is a uh, people who were hiding but this Frédéric Pellisson found that there was in uh, the, all the area there were 28 children who were hidden and I we were two of these children so next year the second of August they're having another ceremony there where uh, is, it, is it called Le Chemin de la Mémoire the, 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 the way of memory where they are going to put plaques of all the houses where children were hidden next year the second of August and they already have a uh, they already have a quartet we're going to play music there's a festival and i see that we'll be in touch i'm in touch with uh, um in the where they have music i will speak to the guy to ask him they want to have a israeli musician who will come and will pay the trip um to come and play and they want to play the music of the film of spielberg the famous music the of the, yes beautiful, which is beautiful music so it's going on the, and and i'm part of this organization which is called memoir ou 1945 uh, and this frederic pellisson has people they meet and they do incredible things they do incredible and they help now they're helping uh, children who arrive in france who have no parents from syria and i I have touched wood because I was born in France. I, you know, a lot of Holocaust things so that I have problem money. But I was born in France. And Jacques Chirac in, um, I think I can't remember, 95, when there was, he went to make a speech when there was he, the, the Veldiv. The Veldiv, yeah, yeah. he accepts the Respond, responsibility yeah. of France. Since that... He was the first, the first. He was the first. So since that, since that, people like me are getting a, a pension of war orphan, and I also get a pension in euro every three months from claims, mm -hmm. which means that touch food, I have no, uh, I have no problem with money. But a lot of people, because I was born in France, but people who were born, uh, who came to Israel, a lot of people, first of all, Ben Gurion didn't want to have anything to do with the Shoah. Ben Gurion said he wanted people to be Israelis, you know. He didn't want people to speak, you remember? Until, until the Ahmed trial, people didn't really speak that right, much. Right, right. There was the turning point where people started to... Exactly. So there was, so there was a lot of problem. And people had to hide them, so they didn't want to speak. Uh, so they didn't want to speak, or they well, didn't hide to speak. They were ashamed, people thought Right, how they, how exactly, they how they were persecuted, yeah. yes. And, uh, and, and, and they were, I know that uh, in the kibbutz, I went back to that kibbutz, that some people received money and they gave it to the states, instead of giving it for them. And this is why today we have got Holocaust survivors who have in a terrible state. Yeah, that's true. 
in terrible state. Uh, and, uh, me, I am, you know, I, I'm telling you because... Betty, I'm going to ask you a question, and this is a very, very difficult question. And I'm, it's, it's, a, it's a, maybe there is no answer, but you were hidden by two very, very righteous angels, really. Absolutely, angels, yeah. You've got your own children and grandchildren. If the situation was turned, would you do what they did? I know my, it's an my, exceptionally my, difficult my, question. My, my husband asked himself this question because, we, 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 you know, if two... Yes, yeah, yes, I would. Yes, I would. You would. But, you know, these people, what I've discovered also, every summer, this, we, we, I've never seen money there. There was no money. We were growing there was a garden, we were having apples, we were going to pick up and, and the milk from the cows, and I was making butter, standing making butter, a little bit making cheese. I was a little paisan and I loved it. I loved that life. And in summer, to cut the corn, they only had fields. To cut the corn, there were only three guys coming, uh, working there, and one was sleeping in the barn, and one, and, and, uh, and, uh, I did not know they were Jewish, and they didn't know I was Jewish. And it's only when my husband, my husband, uh, put his tape recorder on the, on the, you're going to come with me, you're going to hear, put his tape recorder and recorded their, recorded their, uh, uh, recorded their voice, that um, he said, you see that box of chocolate on the table? There's a box of a cold door. Uh, what is his name? He sent it every Christmas. He sent his box of chocolate. This, this, this year, he forgot to send it. So I said, give me his address. This was in 82, yeah. Give me, I will write. So I, I came home and I wrote to him, to this guy. I said, cher monsieur. We came back from Dulin and, uh, and you forgot to send, and as we, we went to, and he sent me a fantastic letter, which I have, saying that uh, he was so moved by this letter. Of, I said, as I wrote in the letter, do you remember the little girl who, who was there? Did you know I was Jewish? And I said, I didn't know. And he replied to me, he was very moved by that letter. And of course, he didn't know, he had no idea that we were Jewish. And uh, he said he was not hidden by them. He was hidden by another couple there down the road. And uh, of course, he will send them chocolate. And next time he come to Jerusalem, he will tell them. So I discovered that these people, if they would have been uh, found, they would have, would have been shot. All of them yeah. shot. And you know, under the, 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 the thing was wood, and there was a trap you open. It was a cellar. In the cellar, they had wine and things like this, and was killing the pig every 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 year, and they were there. and uh, and uh, uh, he used to go and he used to go down and listen to the radio because the radio was the goal. Who went to Churchill in London, and there was a news, da 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 da, da and the news. This is Sissi Londres, and the goal was reporting from London, and this was forbidden. So he used to say to me. If somebody tells you what I go to the cellar, never tell them that I have a radio there. So he was part of the resistance, if you want. He was having his, they were having this own réseau of resistance, which is really incredible. His own réseau of resistance. Uh, uh, and this clock is incredible. This clock is, uh, he, when, when I came to him, um, I, I, we went to him every, because for years, David and me used to go either to Scotland, either to Aix-en-Provence, and always go, went to them and uh, to see them. And after that, we used to go to put flowers on their grave. And now I went to see flowers on their grave, I always do. And if I can't, I ask Frédéric to do it for me, really. And uh, first of all, he gave me a key, this is the key of a barn. The is key. that the key of the barn? Yes, 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 the key of a barn. Yes. So you can... Take you it. can uh, and if you can tell us this, the story of this is the key of the barn. When I, I went to see them, he, he gave us this. This is the original key this of the is barn. This is the key of the barn. Wow. And this is the trunk. This, is the, this is the trunk that your father gave you. Yes. When yes. you came. When you came from Poland. It was not like that. I painted the nice fixed. But this was his original trunk yeah, that yeah. he bought from Poland. Yeah. 
but uh, it was in a terrible state. But I, I, I fixed it and I polished it, and I, it, it was, it was, it was in a terrible state. But now, this is the original trunk from Paul. But this is the clock, which has their name Dulin, you see, and Yisher. And this, this is 200 years. And this, cl this clock, there are many clocks like this. They always have the son who love. They always have uh, um, corn for food, roses for love, and, and thing for honey, sweet. And they have, I'll show you, this is original, this is not original. So when he, he wanted that clock, to, I mean, sh show you something. He wanted that clock to be in, uh, you can spend the day with me. I will make you lunch. Clocks like this, they are like this, and they all have this is old clocks, and they all have the same. Uh, they all have the same thing. You see, they all have that 1840. This clock was made for his father, and this clock, you see, they all like that, mm -hmm. and they are all have the same symbols. Okay, he wanted that clock to be in Jerusalem and he they didn't have any money and whenever we went there uh, but they, they went there, it was, we would spend the weekend there and the mayor of the village was their nephew and I went to church to mass and he said to me you know when we were not here and when we are old everything will go to my nephew we were, because they will help us also okay so I went to church it was very interesting because when I was a kid, the church was sung in Latin and the priest was generally facing the hotel. And now at that time, 20 years later, the church, the mass was sung in French and the priest was is looking to the public. It's very different. So I said to him, so he said to me, to him, ask my nephew, tell him that I want to give you the church, the clock. So after mass, I saw his nephew, and I said, look, Monsieur Guichard, well, he said, maybe. He said, didn't say yes or no. Wow. Um, and, uh, and I told him, it's very funny, I went to the priest, he's saying that, he said, yes, he's, he, he, he'll do like mass à l'envers. He, he said the mass upside down, he said, not in, okay. And uh, then, then, I came back home and they, they went to this old village home and I went twice to see him. So what was very interesting is that the last time I saw him, a few months before he died, they went, he, she was paralyzed, so they went at one point, two years before, they went to, uh, they went to, to, to an old village home and she died and he shared a room with an old man and the last time I saw to I uh, last time I I saw him, he shared a room with an old man. There was a, a bed and a little table, and on the table there were two photos: the photo of his mother and a photo of us. Gee, that photo. That photo of us, you know, that photo of my brother. Uh, not this one, the other one. Okay, I put back everything to my mm -hmm. that, that photo, uh, okay, that photo that you saw of my brother. Okay, where is it? Yes, 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 this photo. On the table, this photo. So which means that a man who had fields and cows and a forest of, 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 of chestnuts and garden and everything, and uh, he helped create, make cheese in the village, where at the end of his life, 
He went to an old age home and what did he take with him? Two photos. Two photos. Photo, photo of his mother and our photo. That's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's an incredible story. Um, and, and, and you know, there are not many stories because I, 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 I meet when there is Alumim, there is an association. Have you heard of Alumim? Alumim is an association yeah. of. They are kids like me, but they didn't have the luck that I had because there are not many people had the luck to be loved like we were loved. There was a lot of children that were, they were hidden, but they were abused as well. Exactly. Exactly. So we were, they were really angels. This is why Stephen said we were angels. I think I can give you one of you. I've got two of you, this one of you. I can give you. Um, uh, now I want you to go to the computer. Betty, I just want to thank you. I want to come in and I just want to thank you because I am in a, extremely good. grateful to you. Betty, there are no words, really. So for me actually to have met you at uh, with Steve Lindy which I'm also very grateful for introducing but at Klaasfeld because he had also a very important role uh, um, yes and in, in, yes. in his book there's yes. your mother and your brother and I've got a letter from him and you have the letter from him and the same Barbie with Shibert went to Arrest in South America came to send people for us Unbelievable. And 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 uh, Klausfeld, and now Klausfeld has accepted to be member of honor of Frederick Association. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next year he will be there. He'll be there. And August the second of August he'll be there. So I'm preparing now to go to Vietnam in in You've March. You've been asked to. And after that I'm going to to village again. And I, for me the village is my. I've got more friends there than I'm here. No. Amazing, sure. It's an amazing story. No, no, it's really, I see people who, for me, I really think the village, I'm at home there. But I just want to really, I want to thank you, and I, you are an inspiration. You're an inspiration to all of us, and thank you him. are, you are an icon. There's no one no, like no, you, but, but and no, you no, really no. are, you know, you're so full of life, and you are, you, you, you are so positive. But and because of Frederick. Because of Frederick. But you, what you've because, done and because, how you... Uh, no, because what he, because of he found things that I did not want to do, I didn't want to find. And my husband did find and he didn't want to talk. Uh, it's uh, like a circle that's, that's yes, been closed. Yes. It really is. And I, I, I was, remember Steve met me, I'm much younger and much stronger oh, now, much healthier than I amazing. was. Because of this, of this Frederick. But Betty, I just want to ask you something, because for me, it's always been very difficult. In France, unfortunately, there were many that that worked with the Nazis, and a lot of French yes. Jews were actually deported. The percentage is very, very high. No, but I'll tell you what happened. The French who were cultivated, the French who were cooperated with, with, with the Nazis, the poor people and the peasants in the... In they the villages. Had, uh, villages, they did help children, they helped Jews. And Savoie, where I come from, it is a, the place where there is the highest number of mm -hmm. just among the nation. That, that area of France. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a, a place of France, where it's the highest among of the, of the... You know, Betty, what you've said, can I just mention something? What's also very, very hard to understand is the, 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 the Catholic Church, the Pope, they say that they had also a concord, they had an agreement, and after the war they actually helped Nazis go to Argentina. You have good and bad in everything. My father, after the war, never knew what he must gone through. I was never very much touched with his father because he put me in boarding school. He had to redo his life. He remarried. We were not close to my father. I was much close with this man, Mr. Gisha, but my father. I was never close to my father. He came to our wedding with his second wife. He came to my son's bar mitzvah, but the last time my son, my, this is why my kids were very close with the side, the Scottish side, because the David's mother died when she was 96, 97. She used to come, we used to go, and David was very close with his family. His family adopted me, and the uh, Scottish and that. So I was really, so English is like French for me. Mm -hmm. I have no difference. I can read, uh, no difference. Mm -hmm. I can read poetry in English, uh, no difference, because we spoke English at home. We spoke French when we didn't want the kids to understand, but we spoke English. And I speak English to my son. I feel better in English, but the, with my, one of my grandsons, I speak better English wow. than French. 
So, so, in, so I was adopted by the family of my husband, who were very, very lovely, and I used to go, love going to Scotland, and we used to go there a lot. And, uh, and French, the, the kids have, my, my, my children have British and French and Israeli passport, but my grandchildren have French passport. Mm -hmm. And for, I also have a British passport. Be why? Because at the beginning we were married, the French had only French passport, not, not European passport. Yeah, it's EU. So at one point my husband wanted to go and work in London and I wanted to work also. So I went to the consulate here and I took an oath wow. to the Queen to become British. So I've got a paper that I'm Jeez. British as well. So my, my children have, my grandchildren have French passport, uh, which are now European passport. But they don't speak French. And I'm very sorry, but they don't speak French. But they didn't have any affiliation with their French family because there was nobody. Could it be that your father was so traumatized from what happened that... Probably, but I never talked to him about it. I never talked to him about it. He redid his wife, he, he married another woman and he was busy working, working, working. He became a wealthy, you know, he did quite a wealthy man. Because at one point, I must tell you the story, I used to rent an apartment, in Tel, uh, to rent a room in Tel Aviv, and I was working with Bachelor Dorothil. And all my, half of my salary used to go to the, the room. And I hadn't, I hadn't met a man who, uh, I, who uh, wanted to marry. And a lot of guys were, I was very beautiful. And a lot of guys were running <laughs> after me, but I didn't want to. And uh, at one point, he said to write a letter to my father. I said, look, you promised Because he promised you an apartment. Yes. I promised me to buy an apartment, and I haven't met the man whom I, I, I really want to live marry. But I worked very hard on myself. So my, husband, my brother came, he was studying medicine. He, was, he came to the start in Bellison, and we bought, and I can't remember when, we bought a small apartment on the roof in the whole garden on the thing. Today it would be worth yeah. a fortune, yeah, yeah. a fortune. It was very cheap. It was very cheap. You know, when I came to Israel, there were four million people here. Yeah, it, was yeah. very, it was very cheap. And we bought, I had this tiny room with a big roof, and, uh, and uh, it was very, very cheap. And uh, I must tell you a very moving story. When I met my husband, I used to work in Bathsheba, and I went for holiday, and I was invited to a party in Abu, Abu, Abu Tor, in Abu Tor. I've never been to Jerusalem. And one Friday night, I had a girlfriend. We came to that party. We slept with somebody from the Jerusalem port, can't remember. And we went to that party in a house in Abu Tor. And there was a cushion, some small music, and there was a chair next to me. And two guys came to the door, and one guy had a beard. And he sat next to me. And he said, um, uh, he looked at me and he said, uh, you speak English? I'm from Scotland. And from where are you? I'm from France. And there was an incredible attraction between. And he said, what is your name? I said, well, I've got a lot of names. Betty, but my name was Bert. But during the war, during the Ulpan, they wanted to give me uh, uh, an, an Hebrew name. So they called me Bathsheba. I said, Bathsheba? What is that name? I've never heard Bathsheba. In French, it is Betsabe. Uh -huh. So he had a beautiful smile, he was very handsome, my husband. And he said, I am David. Oh, and that's where, that's I'm where I'm that was the first time you met? Yeah, I am David. And we started flowing, it was an incredible attraction, we started David. And he said, I want to see you, and he said, he was, he was renting an apartment in a place in Jerusalem where there is now one the hotel, down the King David, there's an hotel in the corner. He was renting a room where Israel was divided. Yeah, it was before 67. Yes, yes, yes. And it was, uh, he was renting a room, and he said it was Friday night. He said, come tomorrow to, for tea. But I, we had some plan, I have to go back to do it to that day, that work. Uh, I said, I live on the roof. That's Sheva and David. I said, you don't impress me because I also live on the roof. See. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, and, 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 and I said, yeah, I said, come, but I didn't take it seriously, you know, it's uh, before I met Shagal, it was before I met Shagal, and uh, I didn't take it seriously, and he said, um, uh, at the end, he was on the telephone, so I gave him my address, he said, I said, I some bath on the room, some, on the roof sometime, come to visit me. Wow. <laughs> and the next was Friday, Sunday night, came from work, 
and the bell rang and he was here. And That's he went wonderful. on for two years like this. Two years he was working at the radio and I was in Tel Aviv and we used to come to Tel Aviv all the time and uh, he used to come in for two years from 64 to 60. We got married in, we got married in 64, we got married in 67, yeah, yeah. Betty, you know your life is full with miracles, and yeah, um, yeah and I hope it, con it and, continues because and I you must just stay young and you must stay energetic. I and keep meeting people. This is why. Amazing. This is why. Last week I got the telephone call from the, from the ambassador of Vietnam and invited me to Vietnam. That's wonderful. Well, you must have many more invitations, and your story, it is unique and it's so inspirational and it's so special. And I'm so privileged that, that I could <laughs> be in your home and you can relate it because it, it's so important that people hear that there were amazing people, people. that were prepared to sacrifice their lives to, absolutely. Save, to, absolutely. Save, absolutely. to save Jews, Jewish children. Absolutely. It's amazing. Absolutely. And this is, why, this is why I feel, and I've got the strength, I feel that in many, many years I won't be here alone. And we are the last one. Yeah. We are the last one. We, can we were there. Because there's so much anti-Semitism going on, you, and so much the li you're the living proof. And so many, so much, so much denial. This what my husband. Come to see the books. Come Thank to you so much, Betty. I'm so appreciative of you, and you should just be well at Mayavis Room, in very good health, and just knock us. Now the, the the clock, the clock, the start of the clock. When so my brother was in life in in relation with them when they were when he was in life. Mm -hmm. But there is something very strange what happened with my brother because when he died, I received a letter from him or my brother saying, I, I got a letter from the wife of a mayor that he had died in his home. I will never go to the, I won't go to the cemetery and I will not go to the, I will never go back to Dula. I, I don't want to put my, my, my feet in my finger, of child, something very strange. So he never went back. This is your brother never went back? He went back. And so what I did, I, I wrote a letter then to the wife of the mayor, the mayor died, saying that, look, there is that clock that he wanted to bring in Jerusalem. And I also have, all my life, I send him letters and photos of the children and all the, and I would like now to have, and they have the original of a copy of Yad Vashem. Because the copy of Yad Vashem, I have the, the copy of Yad Vashem, Ah, oh, this is the, okay, this is the, you're going to see them, to see the, no, I have it somewhere. Okay. Look. Look, this is, I, I went back, this is the village. This is, this is picture that my husband took. I took my, okay, this is my school. This is picture that, this picture that I took my husband, when we went there, when I went back with my daughter. This is my school. This is the church. This is all the kids, this is the village. This is my daughter when she was 18. This is a village. This is a this is a grocery. The grocery. She died, but I met her son now, and son asked for picture. And I, I'm telling, you, I'm so in touch with that village. You have no idea. You have no idea. This is a school. This and is, the, this is over the house. Here, over here. No, this is a school. This is a school. And the house. And, and I I live now. This is a school, and I live now. With uh, with uh, this is a school. I live now in a house with a woman who was uh, who was a beautiful school. This is the barn. Now this is now. So what? So what I did? This is a school the house when it was there. So what I did? And here's the clock. This is the clock. Now what happened is that I got I sent a letter. I said to this woman, I would like to have all my letters and my photos back and the original document of Yad Vashem. And she wrote not a very nice letter saying that 
all in their tradition, they are not, they don't touch paper that somebody would die, that everything is, and they are, the, mind, the, 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 the clock is in a terrible shape, it's completely rusted, it doesn't work, but I said, look, I don't want the clock, the clock was in a big, I just want the, the, the because it was in a big thing, yeah. I just want the wood, I just want, so at the end, she agreed to, we used to go to like the, at the Shem, to, uh, to, to Aix-en-Provence, and we went to, and we found, we found a, we found a man, this man. Uh, actually, it was very interesting. It was Rosh Hashanah because I used to work at the at the at the Mishrachut, and my my holiday was it's always foreign, Sukkot. Foreign ministry. The foreign ministry. Sukkot, Yad Vashem, Sukkot, Sukkot, uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah was always my holiday. So we used to always to go and wow. do it for two, three weeks. So we arrived in Aix en Provence. Yes. We used to arrive in Aix en Provence, and David parked his car. And we saw a, 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 a shop where it was uh, antique, and I said, I'm going to see. So because we went back to the village, and this woman had put that clock in a, in a box, which didn't work, we put it in the car. And uh, I went to the, sh to, the, to the clock, the man, and I said to him, uh, you know, I'm Jewish. I don't know why I said that. I just inherited the clock. So the guy said to me, Shana Tova. Wow. And he said, I said, what? He said, I'm also Jewish. And he said, I said, I called my husband, he often coffee, and he told us he was, had been also a hidden child. And he told us, we met this guy, and he said, I can't prepare the club, but I'll give you an address. So he gave me the address of this club, and we went to this man, and this man worked three, three uh, months to put that club, and he told us that this is the original thing where clock like this were put People used to have them on their backs, and they were used to go around the village and say, "Orloge, Orloge, we want an Orloge." So they used to take the the, the name of the people and name of the village and take orders. And this man told us that a clerk like that represented by the salary of a of a of a paysan over the year. <laughs> and he works. It was very expensive. He worked for a long time to put so this is original. But he gave us the, the weight because they were one is three kilos or something, mm. and uh, I have a, f a friend did that thing here, who reminds us of this. So now the clock was was not working, now it's working, and and, and a lot of things we that village is really something. And is this the cemetery? This is the cemetery. We oh. went back when my kids were uh, to the bar mitzvah for this one. This is a, but I've got new one. I've got this is a this is a grave. I always go put fair flowers there, always, and I've got from this here. I mean, you share, you see. And this is a Petrin, and this is the this is was this was about thirteen years ago. But I'm always always in so this is and this is a guy who will put the clock now. And, and when I went, when I went with my grandchildren, for a bar mitzvah of, uh, of one of my grandchildren, who is now 23, 10 years ago, we went back, and their hearts looked like they had left them two days before. Mm. No, nothing had changed. I said to the kids, don't touch anything. You know, this is, this is me 10 years ago. And can I ask, um, Betty, where is this park where it's got their names? Josephine and Victor. No, no, no. This is uh, oh, this is in Yad Vashem. This is in Yad Vashem. This is in Yad Vashem. Uh, this is because in Yad Vashem. Because this is in Yad Vashem. Oh. This is in Yad Vashem. But I want you to come now to okay. the to, to the room. Uh, this is my my mother's brother, who came from Poland. And my mother came to stay with them, and my aunt. And they had two children, their daughter and a, husband, and, 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 and a son. And I used to, I didn't have any family then. When, we, when I was coming from 16, 17, I used to go and visit them. Where did they live? In Lille, which is not, oh, okay. And then their daughter went to dance in Marseille, she met this uh, soldier who had come to liberate France and they got married and she knew he was a Jewish soldier? yes 
and she he had a magazine and she knew my mother more than me because she told me about my mother I didn't know my mother very much I didn't know her my, I didn't know her but my mother stayed with her with them for two or three years before she met my father so she knew my mother more than than so she's the one okay that's a story but what I want to uh, and you kept in touch with her all the years Yes, until she died. Yes, yes, she died. Yeah, yeah, I kept oh. it. Uh, yeah. But you see, my husband, look at this. All, everything which is about the Shoah was history of the Jews. It, it, he just collected everything. Everything. You see, you see that here. Look at this. Children of the Star, the Jews of Lithuania, with me. Uh, uh, this is all my oh. husband's. Uh, and did, did you start reading the books? Have you started? I started. I've got a lot of things to read. Yes, but he he collected. He knew everything about the Shoah. Really everything. Uh, so now. And here's from the Karamba Salon. Thank you for sharing your story. We are honored to have you with us during this meaningful event. That was Yoma Shoah. No, of this is a, a collector. I've, I've invited yeah. so much. <laughs> Look at them. I don't know where to put them anymore. Wow. I'm invited so much, so I've got, I'm invited so much, I can only get a certificate. This is, this is from a French ambassador last year, last year, uh, wait a minute, uh, this is my show, this is the, the, the birth, this is, this is when, my dad, when Biden was here, this is the Israeli ambassador, I'm telling you, I'm invited all the time. That's wonderful. I paint also, this is our painting. But I don't paint anymore. Percent. But the one I want to show you, I want to show you. I can take that chair and see. Kepen, bonjour. Bonjour. Vous venez de Jérusalem. You come from Jerusalem. Vous avez été témoin de ce qui s'est passé ici il y a 79 ans. You have been with me. J'ai vécu ici à Nîmes de fin fin 20 septembre 1942 à début septembre 1945. Last year. À Dunain, d'accord. Et... Et vous aviez quel âge à l'époque 7 ans. 7 ans. En 1942. 7 ans en 1942. Et, et vous avez des souvenirs clairs ah, de ce oui, qui s'est passé. Oui, oui, oui. À Dunain, en septembre. Mais c'est bien. 40 ans après, en septembre 1982, okay. Betty et David Eppel, son mari, rencontrent Joséphine et Victor Guichet à Dunain. Okay. David est journaliste. Il enregistre la conversation Il sur le téléphone Il record de mémoire. C'est Michel, les gens, les communistes, ils ont savé qu'il vous avait caché les gens. C'est vous, mais vous êtes là, vous Ah, les gens, ici, bien sûr. Ils savaient. Ils savaient. C'est incroyable. Il y avait à l'école, il y avait à l'école des milages. Mais c'est votre voix. Avec les enfants d'ici. C'est votre voix. Moi, je ne voulais pas... Je ne parlais pas de la Je ne parlais pas d'Auschwitz. 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 Je ne parlais pas I think you can have it and have it subtitled. First of all, this is a picture, a photo of my mother before I met her. I didn't know her before she was married. When she was living in Lille with her brother, now her daughter, whom I took a photo, sent that to me. This photo. This is. She. She sent. She yes. This. My this is my cousin. I'm now in. in uh, her son now lives in New York, and I'm in touch with her son. And she sent you the picture of your she mother. She sent because my mother lived with them before. Uh, she was uh, before she was married. Before she met your, your father? Yeah, before she met my father. This is she was always wearing little beret and she was very elegant. This was my mother. Okay, before I met, before I met, before she was my mother. Now, when, after the war, 
I never had a birthday. I never had. I didn't know really. I knew I was seven, but there was never any celebration from birthday, nothing, okay? And when my father came to take her, us, for a year we grew with my sister until we had the age to go to boarding school. And so I was there 10 when my father came to get us, I was 10, okay? Um, for my 11th birthday, this aunt gave me that brooch. For my 11th birthday. And in the brooch it's your... My mother and my brother. And your brother. This aunt who... No, 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 nothing to do with that. Okay. But aunt who should... Not, not this. The sister of my father, who <laughs> when oh, he came okay. at, with, with, in the bay. And she forced me to wear that. I was 11, to go to school, and I didn't want to wear it. Because the girl, the kid in school, I said, who is that? Who is that? My mom, where is she? I said, I don't know. Why do you wear this? I didn't want to wear it because, because, I mean, it was terrible for me. She gave me this for my birthday and forced me to wear it. And the wow. children in school used to say, who is that? I said, where's your mother? I said, I don't know. I have no mother. No. It's, it's very difficult, yeah. Psychology, she was, she was wrong. She was wrong. So this ended that I had, and then, and then, when my Yaron, my son, was now 50, when last time he saw his grandfather, my, we had a bar mitzvah at the hotel and we had a little lunch and uh, David's mother came and my, and my father came with his wife. The last time, my, father, my kids saw their grandfather three times. This is why they had, they don't want, they are finished with French. But my father went to the hotel, gave a little box I threw the box after with a ring, little diamond ring, and he said, "This belonged to your mother." This was your mother's ring. Yes. Now I didn't ask question, but it's probably the ring he gave us when he asked her to marry her. Now, when we came back in '45, there was nothing in the house, nothing, 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 nothing. But he told me that there was a cupboard attached to the wall and uh, one day my mother must have taken that, I threw the box, I don't know why, I my mother must have hidden that ring behind some old uh, clothes and one day there was an Ozeret there and they found the box with a ring. And so when my, my Yaron, my son, had his bar mitzvah, my father came and gave me that ring. So every time I go to a concert, I, I, I wear that ring. The only, the only thing I have for my mother. The only thing. Because people have things. I have nothing. Why didn't your father give it to you sooner? When you got married or...? I don't know. I don't know. When he came to, a, he came to a, my son, Barmita, we went after the, we went to see them in the hotel. And he came and threw me a box. My father was a, was a very hard man. He did not, he must have suffered a lot, yeah. <clears throat> but he, 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 didn't show, he never showed his feelings. So this, this ring, it's so, it's so precious. It's the only, and to think that your mother wore it. I think so. Yeah. I think so. It's a typical ri ring where the man gave a woman on the house to get married. I've got a picture of my, my, my parents' wedding somewhere. I think I'll look for it. So it's uh, really, uh, so did you take that thing of Ghana? Mm. I'm going to say, you know what you one should do? This you should hand down to your, it should stay in the family. It should always stay yeah, in the family. Yeah, they know, they know, they know, they know, they know, they know this and they know, they know that, they know, they know, they know, this they know. Well, Betty, th you are against all the odds. You have no, yet no, no, I, I, I it's know amazing. That, I, I know also that, 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 that film which is being made now, which has been, this, this journalist has done a fantastic job. 
a fantastic yeah. job in doing. He recreated all that from the interview I first gave last year until now. He did a fam fabulous job. Um, and and now Frédéric tells me that they are trying to have it play in in France as a, in as a documentary. He's in contact with us, and I will try to have it if it's possible. You are you? I think I it think would be wonderful if it could be in the Jerusalem Film Festival. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes, yes, I will try. Yeah. I will try. Now you can have Thank it. Thank you did so you, much. Did, 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 you, did you take the, the link? Betty, okay. I really appreciate did it. Did you take the yeah. link? Up? Did you take the link? Up? So Betty, this is a picture of your the parents of your father, father your yes. grandparents. My grandparents. I never knew anybody from my family. Never knew anybody. And they were living in in Poland. Lodge. Everybody in was Lodge. living in Lodge. Everybody. How come these pictures survived? Uh, this... Uh, Maybe they were sent to family that had... No, this cousin, in, in, uh, this cousin who died, who my, my mother was, had a lot of pictures. She had sent? She had sent, she had sent, yeah. And when I'm going to find something really incredible, when my husband was alive, suddenly one day, there was no email then, there was only fax. He got a fax from uh, Evo Institute for Jewish Research. And uh, it says, November 95, Mrs. Betty Appel, dear Mrs. Appel, why answering, I, I didn't do anything, my husband, my husband, why answering some of our reference requests relating to France during the Holocaust period? I came across your request relating to the census record of the Department du Nord. As it is not clear from our record whether we, we were previously successful in finding any documents relating to your personal experiences, I checked the census record in the U record deposited at Ivo and found the enclosed page which is taken from the census record of Valenciennes. It appears to be your own personal census entry. If this is a copy of something you have already received, from us in the past, I apologize for blah, 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 and they send me that. Now, this is... This is amazing, British. This is when... There's also, a, there's also some of my, of my father and my brother and, and everything. Now, this is when in... 40, when the German decided that all the Jews had to go to the police and give their name, this is what my father gave to the police, to the gendarmerie. Now, when they arrested my mother and my, came at home, they arrested my mother and my brother. And then when the German came to look for us, they knew there were over three people hiding going somewhere so they came to looking for us and the German had this this Barbie had this in his hand. That is a story. Yeah. That we had they had this in their hands. They had everything. It's a miracle. It's really a miracle that A miracle I'm here. That you hear absolutely It's a miracle I'm here. And I consider I, I say to people I am a miracle. You really are. I am a miracle and this is why I love life. And this is why I get up every morning, and this is a new day, and this is why I am who I am. And because of this Frédéric Pellisson. Because before, I was not like that. I am telling you, as Steve, I was not like that. Well, Betty, please God, you should just continue in the most amazing, now, I don't know inspirational I, work that you do. I don't, and know. I don't know if I can give amazing. you... Now, I, Betty, thank you so much. I think, I think... You this is the original diplomed on attestation of just among the nation which was given to me in uh, 81 in the 23rd of june 81 and we, br we brought it to them i got and this is the original after they died i got them but now it's faded but last year when i when i gave the, the medal to the to the village i received that with another diploma this is from yad vashem yes yes both are from yad vashem and you here know, you have their names. Did you have their names? Yes, here? Victor and Josephine Guichard. Victor and Josephine Guichard. Look, you see? Attestation RHN Arzikaron. And it says 
je leur donnerai une place. I will give them a place and a name which, which will not be. Ce sera mes tamars. No, I, I have really quite an incredible story. But man.